I want to tell you about the day my life changed for good, and it was on foreign soil. It all started with an ad in the Sunday newspaper. Uh, I spent my 20s uh, finding out that I probably was not going to be a mom by the homemade version. All around me were 14-year-olds getting pregnant in the alleyways, uh, but that wasn't going to happen for me. In my 30s, I spent the first part of those years building a business. And then when I came close to age 40, I started to realize that one of the big goals of my entire life was to be a mom, and it was probably not going to happen. Uh, or at least I was running out of time. I didn't think that I wanted to roll the dice on some of the medical technology that was going to allow me to maybe get pregnant, maybe not. And then that one Sunday, I saw the ad in the paper. I never read the ads in the Sunday paper. But it was a picture of a little girl with almond-shaped eyes. From that moment, I knew what I had to do. When the whole adoption process started, I was in a flurry of preparation. First thing I had to do was convert my office into a nursery. Second thing I needed to do was stencil every single vertical surface in my house and some of the horizontal surfaces as well. Um, we were glad that the adoption happened when it did or probably the entire house would have disappeared. Uh, the other thing I needed to do was prepare my blind dog for the addition of a child into the household. I didn't know how he would react. It took about six months till we got the referral, a picture of our daughter that came in a FedEx envelope in our foyer when we had returned from a three-day work-related retreat. And it was very, very hard to wait for the two months that it took for us to get to travel. When we traveled to China, it was a 21-hour flight from JFK to Vancouver to Hong Kong. And then we took a train from the Kowloon Station in Hong Kong into Guangzhou, which is in Guangdong Province, southeast part of China. I had three fears about going to China, none of which had anything to do with becoming a new mother. Um, even though I had obsessed about all that stuff online, I was worried about the language barrier. I was worried about the food, and I was worried about having to use the Eastern-style toilets, which were squatting over a hole in the floor. Our travel group was 10 families. We came home with 11 children. Two uh, were twins that came home with one of the families. We dealt with fear number three on the train from Kowloon to Guangzhou where some of the unfortunate folks in our group that had to go to the bathroom had to stand over a hole in the train car watching the uh, railroad ties whiz past <laughs> through the hole in the floor while they were trying to balance and whiz from the top. Um, I didn't have to deal with that, fortunately. I did make a second trip back to China for a second daughter later. I went for the Asian toilets because they were the only ladies' rooms with no lines. Uh, <laughs> the veterans. Um, we met our daughter about 24 hours after we got there. But the night we arrived in China, it was after 40 hours of totally elapsed travel time. We were all a little punchy. We were all exhausted. And some brainiac in our group my ex-husband, decided that it was important for us to have authentic Chinese food on our first night in China to celebrate <laughs> this idea that we were going to become a diverse family, a family of color, embrace this culture that our daughters were coming from. There are about 10 of us of the 20-person crowd that decided to do this locals restaurant. We got the menu. And um, one of the moms across the table from me looked at the menu and immediately started to cry. Because in that menu were delicacies such as deer penis and horse testicles, complete with illustrations. And uh, <laughs> after 40 hours, it was really tough. 
Um, so two by two, all the people from our table went into the inside restaurant at the hotel, which served Western food like spaghetti and steak and hamburgers and all that kind of stuff, with a little bit of a Chinese twist. Um, and our facilitator was, was responsible for smoothing the waters with the people that owned the place. Saving face is really important in China. And we had really kind of embarrassed ourselves as being wimpy Americans. So we dealt with the food thing. We dealt with the bathroom thing. The language thing was handled by Uncle Durr, a Chinese opera singer who had been in the, con in the Congress, who facilitated our way through China. That moment when my daughter's foster mom handed her over to me changed my life. It was obvious to me that she was loved, that she was well cared for, and I have to tell you that for, not for one minute do I regret having to spend 10 days in China listening to the music, eating the food, using the Eastern toilets, <laughs> because my daughter has had so many losses. She will never know her birth parents. She will maybe not go to China, maybe so, I hope she will, but I know that I will have learned some of that and I will be able to give some of that to her. Thank you.